Hello and welcome to the Queer Among Gay Institute, our Q&A conversation for exploration series. I'm Paul Revere, the executive director and president of the Institute, along with my wife, Laura Lee, the director of what? Research, education, outreach, and on behalf of our board of directors, uh, our advisors, our volunteers, and supporting members, we do want to thank you for joining us today. The Queer Among Institute is an independent, nonprofit, anthropological research organization um, studying the human experience and following the footsteps of our founder, anthropologist Dr. Felicitas Goodman. Our focus is reflected in three main areas, and that's experience, education, and exploration. We respect the path of academic balance the creative pursuit of science, while advancing, conserving, and restoring a direct experience of that deeper human connection to all of life. So it's part of our mission to expand our own experiential research with a multidisciplinary understanding that's available to us today. So as an educational institution, we take an open approach. We invite scholars and related fields to help broaden the scope of our own work and exploration. And that's why we call this Conversation for Exploration. These weekly Sunday discussions are available on demand. We have a couple hundred presentations, either through webcasting and YouTube and podcasting, et cetera. And all of these presentations are free. And as a nonprofit, of course, we invite you to become a supporting member. And we thank you, the community members who continue to support the mission of the Queer Maga Institute. Today, let's talk about our health. How can we develop a more intuitive approach to our own health? No matter what you accomplish in life, how large your bank account, the one aspect of life that always levels the playing field, it's our health, it's our, our longevity. Mm -hmm. All of us at some point in our lives, we need to seek some answers to health challenges from our own body, our energy systems in general. Today, we wanna to provide an overview and a vision for a practice of medical intuition and how it's playing a role in the future of medicine. The field of mainstream healthcare is expanding. Evidence-based complementary and alternative medicine treatments are being adopted with remarkable success according to the National Institute of Health. So our guest today says, when done properly, the practice of medical intuition can provide a comprehensive whole person context for one's health. I love that, that we're not working in isolation. We don't take an isolate out of the whole. We have to look at the whole, and there's so much benefit to that. Mm. And I love these gatherings of the mystics to share what we are all finding on the path. We're all mystics as we've got some channels open, and we're seeking how to open them even further, even wider. Our intuition is the key to this. We've all had those spontaneous downloads of information and insight from some source larger than ourselves. We have these antenna. They're poised to receive information on this wider spectrum than our current culture lets on. We know ourselves as transmitters and receivers. We're the ones who've had enough personal experience that we know there is more going on in the world, in our hearts, souls, minds, bodies, then we know. Mm -hmm. But then we have personal experience and one another to verify this. We know that we are all born with this capacity. So we're very pleased to invite Wendy Coulter to talk with us today. She is a medical intuitive. She defines this skill as, quote, distinct, intuitive, observational assessment process based on energetic scanning or reading. Her specialty is teaching those in the medical field how to become medical intuitives. Wendy's brought evidence-based research to medical intuition with peer-reviewed um, articles published in academic and medical journals, verifying the efficacy of a skill set that she says anyone can learn. Intuition, it's a mental muscle that can be developed, trained, whether applied to reading or scanning the body or anything else. Mm -hmm. So we can all ask ourselves, how do we tune up this internal radar? How do we turn it on rather than waiting for lightning bolts of intuition to land? How do we activate it? To what end are we this transmitter and receiver? And how can we apply it for our own and others' well-being? It's always good to tune up that inner technology and develop it further. Wendy's an expert on techniques to develop intuition, 
focused on what's going on within the body, not diagnosing so much as something even more valuable, I think, discerning the backstory, the trauma, the dramas, the stories, the programs, mm -hmm. if you will, that we all have running somewhere deeply embedded. Things that no longer apply and may be interfering to the full expression of our health and showing up in the body as some disorder. How do our thoughts and our feelings impact us physically? How can we utilize this connection for our well-being, for self-care, and for others? Something we could all use help in unearthing to help us navigate our best path through this labyrinth of life. Wendy's the founder and CEO of the Practical Path, Inc., and just that name alone tells you something about her organization, something how uh, about how practical she's made her world and with real-world applications. She's also the president of the National Organization for Medical Intuition, a master certified wellness coach, and she serves on the Bio, Energy, and Health Committee of the Integrative Health Policy Consortium and the Consciousness and Healing Initiative for the Healing Practitioners Council. She's developed an accredited certification program the Practical Path Medical Intuitive Training. Mm -hmm. She has an award-winning book, The Essentials of Medical Intuition, <laughs> A Visionary Path to Wellness. Oh, oh my gosh, Wendy, you're so accomplished. Welcome. That was quite, <laughs> quite the list. Yeah. So I love that. Thank you for that intro. I appreciate well, I have it. more. I have more <laughs> in this intro. Uh, we want to thank Joseph Goldfeder for, for introducing you to us. He's also a member of our community and an acupuncturist and a recent graduate of your program. So for just a moment, I wanna invite Joseph to tell us why our conversation with you today is, is uh, so exciting and revelatory. Hello, Joseph. Thanks for this great connection. We're so excited to talk to Wendy. So. Hey everybody, I'm thrilled to uh, bring Wendy to the GI community. It's just so exciting um, to share I, I can't tell you, it's changed my life since I took this, uh, became certified. Not only I learned a skill, um, my creativity has expanded. I'm part of this um, mission to bring medical intuition to mainstream healthcare through NOMI, National Organization for Medical Intuition, and just excited of the possibilities, um, the tools that Wendy has taught that our, our minds, unlimited potential of what we can do. I think we so often are so yeah. uh, limited in what we think, and there's no limit to our potential. And that's one of the many tools that Wendy teaches and um, the, the um, healthcare professionals and how I'm just one of many graduates coming out of the program and how moving forward, we can change the face of healthcare because we know it needs a little help. Thank so you, because I thought it's really the, about the um, paradigm shift, isn't it? Paradigm I mean, that's shift, the exactly. Part of it, and, yeah. I'll, and I'll get that Wendy's talk in a moment. But I just wanted to say I thought the CI with the ritual body postures, and then what Wendy teaches, we we are in our bodies. That's the starting point, being solidly grounded in our bodies, and from there we have unlimited potential to reach out to the cosmos. We are spirit and form, and um, we have tools that we can access for information. And just have to remember that we can do it. So uh, I'm very excited to be part of uh, Wendy's graduating class and to know her and be part of helping the mission um, moving forward. So with great respect and admiration, Wendy Coulter, I'm so glad to know you. Ah. Thank you, Joseph. That was beautiful. And Wendy, Joseph was saying something so important that we believe also is that we have, I mean, this embodied spirituality path that I think we share is about utilizing the full capacity that we have mm -hmm. and engaging with the universe in terms of those subtle energetics. They're there. We utilize them. We're living in the sea of energy. Let's use it to our, our mutual benefit and that of our whole ecosystem. So I applaud you for, for doing so much to take this into the mainstream. That is just so impressive. Mm -hmm. It's about time and that is going to shift the paradigm. So this is just a big piece of the puzzle. But thank you, Joseph. And, yeah, thank uh, you, Joseph. Yeah, yeah. Great intro. So, Well, Wendy, where do we start? <laughs> Let's start with how did you get to this? Oh, you my gosh. You're a composer. You're a musician, songwriter. <laughs> You've done your homework. <laughs> You've done 
uh, you were an executive in the music industry, I and was, now you're doing yeah. this. How did you go from there to this? That's a great question. First of all, Joseph, thank you so much. Joseph is just a joy. And uh, uh, Joseph is one of the directors of the National Board of uh, Medical Intuition, excuse me, National Organization for Medical Intuition. He's on our uh, ah. our, our board. So it's, ah. I get to work with Joseph even more. <laughs> um, <laughs> choice in him. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, well, <laughs> where it began for me uh, was as a um, I had this dual life, you could say, Don't we <laughs> which all? M many intuitive yeah. people do, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we have our real life and we do our jobs and then we have this secret, so to so-called secret life of intuition. And I always had that really from the time I was quite young. I was a very intuitive child and I was lucky enough to grow up in a household uh, that didn't thwart uh, intuition. Most, mm. most adults don't know what to do with an intuitive child except <laughs> tell them to shh, be quiet. You know? yeah. So I, I never got hushed, which was nice, uh, although I wasn't really very well understood. But uh, that that sort of allowed me a little more freedom, I'd say, to kind of explore intuition and, of course, music, which is where my field uh, of interest from the beginning, very intuitive thing to do, play music or art or anything like that. And um, I became later in life uh, an energy healer, always interested in, you know, alternatives and things like that. And, uh, you know, while I was uh, in the music world, uh, first as a performer and a songwriter and all that, and then in the music industry as an executive music producer for television, uh, mostly, um, mm -hmm. I, I was learning all the time, taking courses and teaching courses and um, learning about what is this wacky thing that we can do that nobody really knows what to do with called intuition right gut feelings is as far as you know the the public will take it um and as an energy healer i noticed that sometimes my clients would have a wonderful experience in their session they would let go of a lot of stuff energetically and they felt freer and lighter right. and sometimes they would come back with that same energetic block you know, again and again, it would be very sticky. Um, I also noticed that some people couldn't let go of their energetic blocks, no matter what I did. Uh, and I had just a technique, a group of techniques. I studied a lot of different ones that I used. And I found that because I had developed my own visual sense of intuition so much over my own life over time, uh, that I could kind of see right into their bodies. <laughs> oh, wow. I would do a session and I'd just be seeing all their anatomy and their physiology. It was kind mm -hmm. of a natural outcome of that. And I developed that even more. I was curious about that. But I could also see into their life history and what was holding something in place energetically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, uh, psychologically, you could even say, you know, some kind of combination of things uh, was really kind of keeping something stuck. And so I would ask them permission. At some point, I wondered if I could just not, if I could, and most energy healers and most everybody, and certainly everybody in this group gets these wonderful hits of information, a download, a hit, you know, a flash of insight. And I wondered if I could string those together and create some sort of informational opportunity for my clients so that they could hear what their body was trying to tell them, what their energy was showing me. And so I, st I said, I'm, I'll never forget. I said to my one client, hey, do you mind if I just look before I do any healing? And I said, sure. And so I sat there for all, you know, 45 minutes or whatever. And I just looked and I explained what I saw and I looked and looked and looked and, uh, you know, talked to their body and got information. And that was so valuable to them that in the healing that we did next, they were letting go of things that they'd been holding on to for decades. And I thought, wow. okay, well, something's going on here. And I eventually uh, started getting um, calls from local doctors, you know, under the radar. Got a case <laughs> saying, I can't quite oh, yeah, figure like, out. I can't, I can't yeah. quite figure this out. Do you mind taking a look? And these are my clients that would tell their doctors, hey, you know, this thing disappeared uh, on and on. And so that's kind of the start of it. Oh, I have and, to ask you though. I have yeah. to ask mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. say a visual sense of intuition. So mm -hmm. seeing areas of the body, scanning it, do things light up? Does it turn different colors? Does it talk to the body? Does it talk to you? When you say 
getting into their backstory, you see movie reels. Can you describe what that experience is for you? How does it come to you? Yeah, good question. Well, it, it's, it's, there's all kinds of intuition. Yeah. And that's pretty well documented. And you, you may know a lot of these. Clairsentience is the feeling intuition on and on. Cognizance is the knowing Claire's, intuition. All the clairs, all the good clairs. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the clairvoyance, which means clear seeing, uh, is the mind's eye version of that. And it does take practice. It's not as easily, uh, for most people, it's not as natural. <clears throat> for many people, you want to study with somebody who can show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and for some people, it's natural. For me, um, my mother was an artist, so I kind of grew up <laughs> drawing and painting. So I kind of had this you know, visual sense already kind of established. But even with that, I needed more practice, right, to really see things clearly. Yeah. And uh, so when I look at the body, I'm looking at, you know, honestly, the only correlation out there that I tell, you know, the medical world is, it's like having a, a mental MRI. However, okay. it's really right. not like an MRI, yeah. because MRIs can be, uh, although they can be very clear, and they're wonderful technology. Yeah. Uh, they're not in they're in black and white, you know, I can see in color, I can see down to the cellular level, which an MRI isn't capable of at this point in time wow. um, you know we can even see into the subatomic level and many medical intuitives are they're working in research uh, to see uh, you know with in, in that whole field of scientific research where they're using that kind of skill set so there's really no limit you could mm -hmm. say to how this kind of skill set can be applied uh, and used so I'm not sure that answered your question. Oh, really. yeah. But I mean, <laughs> you're good. seeing into an, a cell. And what what's what would be abnormal in a cell? What would you see? What would it tell you? Is it like a picture of the cell? Or is it some metaphorical picture that's symbolic? I mean, it's it all of the above. All of the above. In my programs, and my, my feeling here is if you're going to call yourself a medical intuitive, you better be able to read the anatomy and the physiology of the body because we're yeah. working with yeah. the body. And I'll give you, this might help, I'll give you the premise of medical intuition the way I see it. Okay. The, prem, the premise is that the physiology, the body, uh, and the biofield, right, which is the energetic uh, yeah. components of the body, hold, store, uh, information from our lives, and you could even go into past lives, certainly. Uh, but it stores information, and generally speaking, when it comes to illness or imbalance, it stores traumatic information, trauma. So, so the body holds these things: physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. And a medical intuitive's job, the way I see it, is to address all of those aspects by scanning, reading, and interacting with the, the client's physiology and biofield, both of and those that things. that biofield just shows it to you in the way best conveyed. So it's got a whole repertoire of tools to deliver that information to you. It's, 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 it's yes. not like having 10 modalities. Right. <laughs> and the, the thing actually that's really important to, to, I think, understand about medical intuition, the way I the way I teach it, the way I practice it, is that it's not a modality at all. <laughs> there are wonderful modalities, energy healing modalities, allopathic modalities, complementary and alternative. What yeah. it is, is a foundational skill that supports any and all modalities okay. from uh, integrative, alternative to allopathic, which is why in the program, we have every kind of healthcare professional. We have health coaches, we have uh, you know, um, fitness trainers, we have uh, acupuncturists, we have, you know, all the way to MDs, right? We have a lot of nurses. And all of those folks are wanting to learn this to apply to their field. So that tells you that mm -hmm. it's applicable across the board. Well, it's which universal is because any and everybody can develop this set. We have this capacity. It's a matter of developing it. So that, well, that yes. makes sense. It would be applied to every aspect of life. Yeah. So, um, the, the, the intuition, um, one of the greatest hurdles, and I've talked to it with many people is just trusting it. We get a download, but then we have to check it with our intellect. And, uh, and sometimes the intellect is lacking in that expansive, um, field. Right. Mm. And so the yes. intellect knows this physical reality, 
that intuition knows an energetic reality. How do you how do you make the the hurdle of let me trust this, let me believe what I get? Because so often we get ahead of intuition, we don't believe it, and then later we go, oh yeah, that that was right. So a little bit of a feedback loop going on uh, in life to teach us, hey, you know, trust this can save well, you, a lot you, of trouble you, in life. You yeah. said a mouthful. <laughs> Okay. That that is the learning curve. I would say that is the learning curve for everyone who comes through my program. For anyone who wants to develop their intuition, uh, learning how to and I don't even call it trust. To be totally honest, um, we do end up trusting our intuition, but that doesn't come out of the blue. It's not faith based. It's evidence based. It's experience based. Yeah. In other words, you can have faith that your intuition is correct, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, but in my world, <laughs> maybe because I'm sort of a, you know, junior scientist you know, or something, I don't know. I always had this very curious mind and I want to see evidence. I want to see um, examples. I want to make sure that what I'm, what I'm intuiting has a basis in reality and it's not just That's some good groovy feedback. idea I had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because that, that will take you down the path of, you know, your, your own mental shenanigans right and so what we want to do is we want to learn and that's really why i always suggest study with somebody <laughs> with this stuff um somebody reputable um we want to learn how to trust what we see trust what we intuit trust what we feel right. and and that takes time and practice and i'll tell you that uh the program that i've developed has set up to uh basically build and grow that trust you have to so there's a ton of practicum hours there's a lot of uh, evidence uh, in terms of how the students are assimilating and using the uh, skill sets I, I you know heavily uh, mentored <laughs> so that everybody really has personal uh, experience with this and you know by the end of the program honestly um, you know after the uh, the year the program's a year long essentially to do both levels uh, the students are reading and experiencing and using their intuition at what I would consider a three to five year level of uh, skill set and that's saying a lot you know for for the fact that they're really working the skill all the way through really from the it's the like first going day. to the gym if you want to develop those muscles yeah. you put in the time right you do Exa the exactly it's and all I, practice and yeah and i agree with joseph you you develop you open your bandwidth it stays open and you become a transmitter receiver of much more in your life creativity information grace i mean it's it's interesting when you decide to open this what about giving yourself permission permission to heal, permission to use your intuition. Yeah. Our society has been very good at shutting all that down. It's not just our moms that, you know, <laughs> society has hushed us up. Really? I mean, that this is a threat to society as it's functioning now. Right. Um, if we want to create a new world, this is the skill set. We need to gear up. And this is one of the gears um, that we need, to, we need to utilize to create the oh, world that's... collectively. So. You're so right. That word, that word is a magic word. <laughs> that per, the word permission and the concept of permission and the actual yeah. act of giving oneself permission, that is really um, at the heart of the work that we do as medical intuitives. What we're doing is we're offering information from the physiology and the biofield of the body for someone, uh, our clients to hear, to assimilate. And that in turn, the, the, the outcome of that ideally is permission level. Their permission level rises. Uh, we're able to gauge that as medical intuitives. That's part of my program is what does that mean and how does it look? Yeah. Uh, and can the person release whatever is holding them back? Can they shift it? Can they change it? Can they let go of it? All of that pre is a precursor to mm -hmm. healing, you would say, right? Yeah. You can't, you're not going to heal if there's no permission to heal. So what we found in uh, doing this work over time is that uh, that is one of the magic things that happens in a, in a medical intuitive session is per people's permission rise. And, and again, I mentioned that early story of when I just told them what I saw, uh, their permission level would start to rise, even though I didn't know what to call it at the time. And they would start to have these miraculous, miraculous healings. I use my little wiggle quote marks there because 
there really aren't miraculous healing. There's permission level going through the roof and that allows for that. It only looks miraculous in a worldview that thinks it's outside of the bounds of reality. There you this go. is expanding our definition of what's possible, what's real, what reality is. Yeah. And the question, you talk about a biofield. Why is it so difficult for us to understand that there is the ability to read the energetics that are there? It may not be visible to our physical eyes, but we know sharks can detect a fish under the sand. It's reading its bioenergy field. If a shark can do it, why can't we do it? <laughs> and I would say that you're reading, yeah, the, bo the body has a biofield. So does Earth. So does the cosmos. I'm interested in reading the biofield of the cosmos, right? That's what I think our work is about. There's so much information. We live in a sea of this information and communication. Physics yes. is actually telling us that. How are you working with scientists? You, you mentioned medical intuitives working with on the subatomic level who's working with the physicists to say hey we are the technology that can actually read this you've got your superconductors look at us we're a technology that can read this as we're well let's use yeah. all the the instruments that we have at hand mm -hmm. to i love that our universe and our place in it yeah. so um this is an exciting this is an exciting field isn't it we're po all pioneers in this well, that's, that's what I say. And that's what I tell my students. I tell them that they're all pioneers <laughs> uh, because yeah. they're going to apply it in their fields and in their lives. And, um, you know, our community is growing and we want to expand it. That's why I started the National Organization for Medical Intuition, just to see what was out there. Yeah. Um, and uh, we did some research through that organization as well, as well as my company. And you know, we're finding that I, I, I have a little sort of a down and dirty answer to your question, <laughs> okay. which is why the, why the, you know, society doesn't acknowledge the biofield. Partly it's because uh, there isn't a lot of empirical evidence. Well, I take that back. There actually are, it, de there are decades of studies on non-local consciousness. There are decades yeah. of studies on energy yeah. practices, but the, the greater population has you know it doesn't impact their lives directly uh so they may not pay attention to it uh medical medical allopathic world is has been very hostile to this whole thing uh because it challenges their idea of mechanistic um the body as a mechanistic uh being right they also uh, like machine. that control don't they yeah. Yeah. But you know, all of this changed in the 1800s. <laughs> it was quite, uh, quite uh, energetic before, I would say the early 1900s. Uh, and there was a big movement. I, I, I learned all this when I did research for my book, because I wanted to find out where did this thing begin, right? You know, we know about indigenous medicine and the connections of spirituality and spirit connection and all that. It's wonderful. But when did it come into, you know, Western society? And uh, it, it did in the 1700s uh, with uh, the rise of, of Mesmer, <laughs> Franz Mesmer, and yeah. that whole Mesmerism, if you read about vitalism, yeah. Mesmerism, yeah. all of that wonderful stuff that was all about the energy of the body and uh, was pretty well squashed, I would say, in the late 1800s and early 1900s by another, uh, you know, field of, of healthcare of medicine that was very challenged by this whole idea. But yeah. they did, they actually proved uh, Claire's way back, way back when. Um, but science has been very, um, science and medicine have been very um, not open to this because there isn't a good measuring stick according to their measuring stick. Yeah. So uh, gold standard studies are wonderful. And I love them. And it's challenging to apply them to intuitive practices. Yeah. Uh, because there's a lot it? of variables. How have you taken the evidence-based research um, and, and made it so quality that it's been published in medical and academic journals? What have you done? Tell <laughs> us about some of them. Because you're well, right, you know, it's difficult. <laughs> you know, you start tearing apart reality. There's no there there. There's consciousness. <laughs> it's, it's our instruments aren't designed for that. We're the instrument designed for that. But that's another story. But how do you, where, how did you do it? Because well, you've taken this so far into the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's You know, I love that you're calling it mainstream. It's still pretty left of mainstream. And 
and and the mainstream folks are starting to take notice, which is really That's which is my point. just the goal, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's like, come on, you guys. Uh, but uh, what I <laughs> what I did was honestly, when I looked into the research on medical intuition specifically, and and again, I found years and of data yeah. on on healthcare intuition in healthcare. The nursing sector, particularly, has studied nursing intuition for. There's 36 years of wow. research that's been published I did and not peer know reviewed. Him. Oh no, there it's phenomenal stuff. Now it's not specifically medical intuition; it's just how nurses use their intuition. Right. And now there's more and more research on how um, medical doctors use their intuition. Now, thankfully, that's coming forward because it's been very stigmatized. For some reason, the nurses kind of said, you know we know what we're doing. So we're going to study this. Um, God bless I don't them. need good housekeeping seal of approval. I need to take care of the patient and I'll use everything I have at hand. Yeah. Exactly. So when, when I saw this, then I looked at the studies that had been done specifically on medical intuitives or self-defined medical intuitives. It was inconclusive at best. And, you know, you know, at worst, you know, like thumbs down, it didn't work. So I'm looking at these studies going, something's wrong here. You know, the way they're studying this fits that very narrow band. Uh, and there's actually, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell your audience since we have a little time here, there's a really fascinating study done, gosh, I want to say the 1990s, and I want to say the late 1990s, but I might be wrong about that. It's called the Young and Ong, A-U-N-G study, where two do doctors decided to do this, you know, after all these inconclusive studies, because the idea in medicine is if medical intuition works, what a paradigm shift that would be, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I know I'm getting to my research here in a moment, yeah. um, but um, that study was considered a failure because they were asking the medical intuitives, and these were people who were from various different skill sets or study, mm -hmm. you know, just self taught or whatever. Um, they asked them to pinpoint a specific disease or issue, and they felt that the medical intuitives didn't do it. But it when it doesn't work like that, though, well, right? here's the thing. Here's the thing. It can work like that. But here's the thing. Uh, when uh, another doctor came in, this was a doctor who had used his intuition and read what the intuitives saw. He said, you guys are looking at the wrong thing. They're seeing information that could correlate to other issues like diabetes or heart disease. And you're just focusing on this one thing. They just gave you tons of information that could actually inform the issue that you're talk that you wanted them to look at, but you didn't see it through that lens. And that is very typical of the studies that we've seen on medical intuition. They're just not, they don't understand the process well enough. So to you ask, ask the about right my questions study. or to set up the right, got it. Yep. Yeah. Right. So that's one of the things. The other thing is, you know, we don't know how medical intuitives have been taught or, you know, the practices, they're not, you know, gauging their own X success rate and all the rest of that. So there's not a lot of support out there for the field. It's kind of catch as catch or can. Standardization in the field. Exactly. And so when yeah. I started my program, I started it with the idea that I wanted to teach a specific method that I knew worked because <laughs> I used it. And, uh, you know, the feedback that I would get was, you know, bing, 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 right on, right on, you know, hit, 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 which was, which is wonderful. But mm. uh, when I taught my, my, classmate, my students rather, I wanted to see if they were hitting their marks too. And of course, all of our, our research, all of our, excuse me, our case reports showed validity, showed validation. And so um, I, I uh, had some support in doing this uh, colleague from the University of California, San Diego, uh, who is a, a family medicine doctor and a researcher himself, uh, helped me with this. And um, we wanted to study the accuracy of the graduates of the program because we knew they were all trained in a very specific way and we saw them hitting their marks. So we had five of our graduates and we had 67 participants from the community, some of whom were actually um, patients from the UCSD medical system, which was really nice. Uh, and uh, we just put together a Likert scale you know, how was, wh what would you gauge the accuracy of your medical intuitives uh, session? I was going to so, ask you how you set that up. What was the yeah, it was, it was a qualitative study and, you know, like, and that's all we can do right now, you know, given what we had, but I got to tell you, it was a, an important study in that regard because you want to do it from that perspective. You want to build a foundation. So 
Uh, we found that, oh, first of all, in my process, uh, the eyes are closed. And so we blinded the session as best we could. <laughs> so one aspect of blindness was that the medical intuitive couldn't get any visual cues or any of that. Uh, all we asked for is a name. That's all we do. And we found that uh, the the results were really kind of blew everybody away, to be honest. Uh, we found 94% accuracy that participants uh, gauged the medical intuitives, rated them as 94% accurate in the evaluation and uh, location of their primary health issue. And again, no prior knowledge. We don't do any intake. We never do. It's essentially what you would call a cold reading. No info, just their name. 94% accuracy rate, which is frankly um, better than anything we've seen out there in the existing studies. <laughs> mm. uh, so that was really gratifying. We also saw 98% um, accuracy in the medical intuitive uh, describing uh, information from their life history that may have led to their health issue. 98% accuracy rating there, which we mm. love to see wow. that. That's yeah. the origin of these issues on How not just physical. How would it be? Because it's kind of difficult to talk about somebody's life, uh, I would imagine. But what is some typical languaging that the intuitive would tell a patient about why their physical the, issue might be manifest? Very well, specific. Mean, how do you... How do you very specific like times a few examples yeah. yeah moments in the person's life mm -hmm. that hold remember i mentioned that the body holds emotional mental spiritual information so we're going to look at those points in time where that information got sort of held you could say energetically oh, in the body and then when something is held in the body for a length of time it can manifest into a physical imbalance and that's not just my idea of how illness and right. you know manifest it's it's a fairly well understood in the spiritual world anyway yeah. and so what we're looking for is that storyline Wh mm -hmm. where when did this begin and how did it manifest in someone's life so that's the life history part and I'll, i can get to that more i can give you a case uh, study on that so it, it makes more sense um the other thing we saw was which was a which really made all the medical doctors kind of ears perk up is <laughs> the the participants rated the medical intuitives as 94 percent consistent with their known medical diagnoses and again we didn't know anything about it we do not diagnose none of that we just describe what we see right. and 94 percent consistency points to uh, what a medical the medical community wants to see how accurate is this yeah. and so because you have data by which you can compare the two. And yeah. I would imagine that that neutrality, I don't know anything. So all I've got is the intuition actually helps that intuitive because oh my you're goodness, not getting yes. sidelined by what you know, right? You're well, not cross-checking it with your intellect, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry for anyway, you're talking another, my favorite word is neutrality, but I will tell you what you're talking about. And that is bias. Uh, there Thank isn't you. one practitioner out there that doesn't have a bias and there's nothing wrong with that. That's how you study your field is right. you learn your field and then you have a lens by which you, at, by, you know, Thank through you. which you look at your patient or your client or whatever. And medical intuition is when it's practiced correctly. And that's, I know that's a big word and I'm just saying it from my perspective and my opinion, sure. when it's practiced correctly, there is no bias involved. And so that's how I train my students is to, and all of them come from their own lenses because that's their medical background or their healthcare sure. background. So in order to use medical intuition, you have to leave your biases at the door. You cannot use them in the process of doing this. It, it'll, there's no point in, there's no point in doing it. If you do Put be a hollow way. bone <laughs> and receive what comes. Yeah. That's yeah. another way to say it. Yeah. That's how we say it. Um, Paul. Oh, no, I was going to follow up. Miriam asked a question in the chat room, and it kind of ties into what you were saying. And that is, is that 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 division between being a medical 
uh, intuitive, but also being a healer and people that combine that field together and make it one practice. She was saying there's a somewhat famous person at an expo near her, which she has trouble with and a little bit concerned about you know, where it's all coming from. And so I know it's a very complicated thing. It's like saying that, you know, when you say that someone's a psychic, there are, there are psychics and then there are psychics. And then there are people who say that they're psychos, psychics that may not have the full ability. So when you or say you're ethics. medical intuitive, everybody can put that on their website and all of a sudden, you know, it kind of waters down the power of what you're trying to accomplish, in my opinion. Well, you know, my, yes, <laughs> uh, my version of medical intuition and actually what Nomi's definition is uh, based not just on my definition, but on, on colleagues who have agreed with this mm -hmm. is that it is a separate skill set from a healing skill set. Can it be a healing process? Well, of course, but using a modality, here's my definition. Medical okay. intuition is not, so you have to define it by what it isn't really. It is not an intervention. It is not a treatment. It is not a modality. It is an observational assessment mm. of whatever's going on in the physical body and biofield. From there, you can use any modality and skill set you know that you have. Or the and point it helps here, you pinpoint the modality. I'm assuming as well. It does, and that's a wonderful thing for the client because there's a thousand things you can try out there and people spend thousands of dollars on those thousands of things. So yeah. medical intuition is also designed to, to uh, hone in on what could help. And think about this, you guys, from a, 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 a medical doctor or practitioner's perspective, you have so many things at your fingertips that you could offer yeah. a patient or client. What's going to work, mm -hmm. right? So we have in our society, we have these issues of, of um, missed diagnoses or misdiagnoses. We have overtreatment. We have undertreatment. I mean, it's, it's a big problem out there. And when I yes, did the yes. research on the book, mm -hmm. I was floored by the, honestly, trillions of dollars that are wasted uh, in the U.S. and around the world on these exact things. Uh, and I was also floored to see you know, just how many lives can be ruined or lost with this. And, you know, yeah. there's no, there's, it, when I, when I, I talk about this in the program, all the, all the folks who work in, you know, hospital healthcare and all that, you know, medical professionals, they're, they're all nodding their head. They get it. They've yeah. seen it and right on the front lines. Mm -hmm. So we want to help as medical intuitives, at least this is my mission. And I think it's it, not, I think it's Nomi's mission as well is to integrate medical intuitives into healthcare, into the hospital system, into clinics, um, training doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals. Uh, we, we really need to have this skill set ASAP uh, because particularly when you look at things like the pandemic, long COVID now yeah. we have, yeah. uh, I'd love to do a study on long COVID with medical intuitives and see what we can find to help alleviate that suffering. Right. on and on it goes on and on so yeah Talk just about the body's own wisdom though the body you mm. said that you talk to the body is yeah. this a dialogue with it is it saying hey i need this first then i need this is it like peeling an onion skin you can't get to the under layers until you peel away the other how does it work um, well it's got its own uh healing i mean I, I read about horses that you put them in a field with certain herbs that they need they will go to those yeah. herbaceous plants and chew on those yeah. right they know like, yeah. like intuition is not just for humans alone i think <laughs> life life knows what it needs it's built i think in the animals yes yeah. <laughs> the, animal, the animals the animals may be yeah. better at it than we are oh, yeah. um you know, we live in a very complex world, you know, and yeah. so we've not been taught from an early age to listen to our bodies. We've never been taught. We've been taught to listen to, you know, success and, you know, going for that next brass ring or whatever. It, it, it's, it's a weird way to live, mm -hmm. honestly. But yeah. when we learn how to tap into our own intuitive connection to our own physiology and biofield, we start to learn a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, one of my practices is that there is no this equals that when it comes to intuition. And there's a lot of people out there that want to kind of corral all of this into a, you know, a, a, a pattern. And I find that very restrictive. Mm 
mm. uh, because to me I it's the same. That. Yeah, it's the same kind it's of a dynamic bias. dialogue in the moment. Isn't yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Not like one size fits all. Never, never one size fits all. So you ask me mm. how do we talk to the body? What is that? Well, you know, I have a conversation with your kidney <laughs> or your liver or your systems, right? Your various systems. And it and wants also, to be heard. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and the one thing that I find so exciting about medical intuition is the connections that we make. Um, th when you go see your doctor or your specialist, they're looking at you through their lens, which is a wonderful thing. You want them to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they might miss connections to other things, right? We have integrative medicine and functional medicine now. These are two fairly new mm -hmm. uh, concepts in how medical professionals can tr work with patients, but there's a missing piece in my world that's medical intuition because it's still all about your your own knowledge base. Right. And when we're talking about medical intuition, we're not talking about our knowledge base at all. I'll share with you right now that I do not, as you know, I do not have a medical background. I've never studied medicine at all, right? I've studied herbs and the fun things that I like, but not, you know, my body of knowledge yeah. Oh, Wendy froze for a moment. I want to yeah, say that we will be in a few minutes taking, oh, you froze for a moment. Um, we'll be taking your uh, questions and comments. So raise right. your hand in the chat room. And I wanted to ask also yeah. about, about flipping it back on myself. So let's say I'm, I'm interested in the program as, as, as a practitioner, but saying, I don't really want to work with others and, and work in, in a field of helping medical professionals, but I just want to be able to monitor myself. Yes. Can I use so understand your own backstory, right? Where right. are blind spots? Yeah. Where's the trauma hidden? Mm. How do we uncover that? That's useful, not only for healing, but across the board and our yes. psyche to understand our story, to navigate life. So, so what you're, you're absolutely right. We all need to learn how to do this. <laughs> yeah. So I do have a program for everyone and a lot of uh, my students and others send their patients and clients and family members, whatever, to this program. It's a, it, it, it's going to launch soon. It's a self-study program called Medical Intuition for Healing and Self-Care. And I, sense. yes, and that's for everyone. And everyone, mm -hmm. you know, I recommend it for everyone. There's a short versions and, you know, little tastes of this on the website for free in the guided meditation section of the website, learning how to connect with your body, learning how to work with your own energy field to ground yourself to kind of clean things out a little bit. And that way you can start to really query uh, mm -hmm. your own body and ask for what it needs. And mm -hmm. people find that I mean, I started that workshop because uh, years ago, because the nurses kept saying, well, I don't have a year to spend, but I, can you do something in like, you know, a day? <laughs> and yeah. so I, I put yeah. that one together. <laughs> and yeah. that's a, Thank you. It's a great opportunity. You know, the best yeah. doctors I've ever been to did use their intuition and it was kind of a, a well-kept secret. I remember going to a chiropractor um, somewhere in the Midwest when I was visiting friends and they said, you got to go to this doctor. I didn't have much. He's the best. Me, He's the but, best. You know, um, he just scanned my body and he told me things that he couldn't possibly know other than seeing. And wow. I'm thinking, this guy's seeing something. He's and a I, medical I intuitive. whispered to the nurses I was checking out. I said, mm -hmm. Dr. So-and-so, he's like, really? She goes, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I, I, it was miraculous. It yeah, really yeah. was. Miraculous is the word you have to It was to a use. farming town and all the, but everybody yeah. knew about this guy. And everybody was, everybody there. was flocking uh, from yeah, yeah. eights away yeah, yeah, yeah. to go to him. Yeah. yeah. He, he had his own clinic. Just I an assume. old country doctor. And <laughs> yeah. I suspect yeah. a lot of the old country doctors were doing this. Yeah. Right? I would think they would. Yes. And you know, yeah. it, it's, <laughs> It's just a different world now, but I will tell you this, there are medical intuitives already working in, in healthcare, mm -hmm. working in the medical field. And one of the very first things that we did at the national organization at NOMI um, is we did a survey of self-identified medical intuitives in the United States. And we sent the survey out to like 360 of these, you know, I'm a medical intuitive, I have a website, I have a business uh, mm -hmm. folks. And we got some great feedback we asked, do you, among other things, we asked, do you work with licensed healthcare professionals? Or do you get referrals from licensed healthcare professionals? Or are you a licensed healthcare professional? And what we found was that 82% of uh, those surveyed said that they 
work directly with licensed healthcare professionals for medical intuition medical intuition services. I Blew see. us away. Blew us away. Nobody ever thought to ask. <laughs> it goes they, on we, so quietly. Yeah. It's kind of like the open secret we all know and utilize, yeah. along with the placebo effect, right? There is yeah. so much about how we think and how we feel that impacts us, oh, right? Yeah. That that is one of our tool sets, but mm -hmm. it's just not it's becoming more of an open talked about secret, right? We all, yeah. And it's I have a question. I have a question audience. on the flip side of that. And is that in the medical profession, I, there's so much stress on doctors and nurses. Yes. Yes. There's so much anxiety. And then you say, hey, we want to teach you a program of how to be, how to be intuitive. I say, I don't know if I want to take on any energy. I've had or enough. I've had enough of everybody else's energy all day long. How do I have that shield of self-preservation to be a, me a yeah. medical intuitive, but be in an emergency room? How can I deal with the the, the incredible trauma that I'm surrounded by yeah. and at the same time stay healthy within myself? Well, that is such a great question. I yeah. teach that in the program. I teach a, a version of that in the workshop. Uh, that is called, in my world, energy hygiene. Mm, energy <laughs> meaning, hygiene. Meaning it's a good you have to time. take care of your energy uh, or you're not going to be good for, and that goes off. That's just not in the healthcare field. That's in life. If, mm. if So I teach skills to ground, to shield, to release energy that you don't need that that's in the workshop and in the main program. Mm. And I teach these skills specifically because uh, the people who work with patients and clients all day long can be like sponges, right? Mm -hmm. Very, very uh, clear sentient in a way, just sentient. They're feeling everything. They feel overloaded. They come back from, and the, the job itself is hard enough. Uh, when you talk about energetic overload, yeah, uh, that just compounds yeah. it. So mm. you have to learn how to care for mm. and keep good energy hygiene for yourself. But not take it all on yourself. Uh, right? Yes. And there are, you know, yeah. to be honest, there are a lot of unwell uh, energy healers or even psychics and whatnot out there because they don't get the skill set on how to take care of their own energy field. It's hard on them, their body yeah. and psyche, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. I even think our pets do that. You know, so many pets, everybody I know, their pets are dying from human diseases. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think they also, they're so energetically bonded with us. I'm wondering if they take it on, right? Sure is it just do. the bad diet we feed them and, and ourselves generally, or is it the energy field? And what are we sharing, right? There's hygiene among our own uh, family. There's hygiene among our own community and our society. We need to think about all the energetics, we that do. We're, all the different spheres that we're operating under. Well, this, this work works perfectly with animals. In fact, we get veterinarians through the program, which is really oh, wow. wonderful. So you can use it with animals, children, yeah. uh, you know, however uh, you choose yeah. to not, you know, as, as once you're a, a grad of this program, you can apply it. Yeah. Uh, raise your hands. <laughs> and um, what points do you want to make before we take just uh, open questions? What did we not ask you that is important to know here? Well, if anyone's curious about the program, I can answer questions about that, uh, how it's structured. Um, um, any practical I, I, tips for all of us, though? Yeah. Um, yeah. To, to, to utilize all that you're doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Give uh, me some tips. Number one, grounding. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of ways to ground. There are, you know, all kinds of things. Some people call it earthing. Um, we're, we're meant to be connected to the planet in some way. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah. And I know this group is very open to this. Um, I like to just put my feet flat on the ground and, you know, either in, in my house or, you know, outside and just imagine roots growing from my feet into the earth. <laughs> Even just a simple visualization like that can calm the nervous system, can yeah. calm the limbic system and really has health benefits because of it. Right. Uh, that's one thing I would also say, and I'm sure yeah. this group is our, our big meditators, but a meditation practice is an invaluable. Again, you know, there's so much research on this now, evidence base for this now that there wasn't, you know, 20 years ago or 30 years ago. It, it, these things are we're kind, of, kind of like getting back to our, oh, how do I say it? Getting back to our, our elemental nature, 
Yeah. Our elemental nature is that we are made of planetary stuff, right? This Stardust, body. Stardust, cosmic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're part earth. So we should be part, we should be part of that. So that's really my, the tip I usually give people is just get, get a meditation practice. If you don't have one, there's a million out there. You can try, try whatever feels good. Well, we have one in this community and there you I go. can't tell you the number of times when we're not projecting we're not imagining i know visualization is one of your your techniques but we're receiving a vision i can't tell you how many times we feel that we turn into the tree of life and grow roots down deep into the earth and branches up into the cosmos i mean if that's a healing modality that is something the universe gives us and grounds us with i mean it's fascinating to feel it as well as see it and um become it it's it's just fascinating to me how how much correlation there is with the natural. I mean, Mother Earth knows how to heal us. We what, know how what, to heal. Well, you know, we talk about these that, things. Yeah. We talk about these things from the perspective of indigenous societies and our and our yeah. ancestors. They accepted this as just a normal part of life that it, it, we have kind of like cut ourselves off from it. And then when you bring it up, it becomes some kind of woo woo off the shelf kind of thing that's. <laughs> <laughs> not real and it's like it's hey, really we, we have to retrain to our ourselves to understand that we're living in an isolated type of experience we're not having that full spectrum of what yeah. human capacity has to offer yeah people say we can't go back to the past and and recreate what we had there no but we can bring some of that wisdom forward it's universal it's there it's part of our basic nature and start to bring it into our world and and help us write our relationships you know, it's hard to be healthy in a world out of kilter. I, I it's love that. It's not just about healing ourselves. Yeah. It's about yeah. healing collectively everything. Yeah. Well, you know, what's really fun about this work and challenging too, is that when you start to clean a clear out, whatever has been blocking you in life Thank and you. start to shift that energy, um, it, you, you kind of get a whole new perspective on, on life, humanity and everything in it. Uh, and I, I really love that about this work. And I also appreciate the fact that you really can't do this work unless you're willing to do the work <laughs> on yourself. That's kind of the bottom line. You mentioned layers of the onion. That is very apropos. It's yeah. because we're always going to be learning, 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 you know, and peeling those layers and finding another interesting thing to work on, you know, and that's the joy in my world of, of this. And it's an adventure, isn't it? It mm -hmm. makes yeah. life so interesting. It it's really like really does. the hero's journey in action. There you go. Right? Yeah. Um, Joseph, um, I wanted to go to you first for your uh, thoughts and comments. I was just thinking uh, what Wendy said, we had to do the work, we have to do the work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm constantly like clearing if I have a thought that like, I don't really want that, like clear it out. Like I'm constantly doing that all the time. I'm just aware of my thinking or becoming more aware of my thinking. I'm always aware, but that's so important to be grounded and to be clearing myself when I'm like, Oh, I had that thought. No, no, to get rid of that, clear it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Part of being part of the grounding process being worldview you know, hygiene. Yeah. Yeah. The energy hygiene is so important because mm -hmm. uh, part of the, being able to do this work, we have to be neutral. You had all these great bullet points, like bam, 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 blah, like I could just see when, because that's the things we talk about in class, this, 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 the neutrality. I'm finding a lot of correlation uh, here with this. Yeah, guy. definitely. Yeah. All this correlation. And there's just, you were just yeah. had all these points. Um, so it's so fascinating um, how uh, attuned it, it is. See, the work. paradigm so, shift is on. Yes. Yeah. The community of both what you're doing and, um, I'm just interested in the body posture. Like we don't really use a body posture so much in medical intuition, but it is being in the body. We have to, you know, being super grounded and everything. I was just wondering yeah. any thoughts you, you might have. Turn on those receptor sites, right? Activate them. Yeah. Like you, antenna like, coming yeah, out. Yeah, uses the, the, yeah. the anthropomorph uh, through anthropology, the but the postures from antiquities, mm. um, uh, you know, cross-cultural. Like, like just... this would be a good one. Connect your heart, connect your solar plexus. Mm. It's just a, it's a healing posture that we use based on art all over the world and the indigenous and uh, societies. Mm. Just connect up, right? And uh, yeah, turn on. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. We're kind yeah. of rediscovering our humanity, our, our human roots of healing. 
that's how it feels to me at this time in history. Rediscovering, Rediscovering. because our ancestors knew this and employed this. Mm-hmm. And I consider it biohacking. Everybody <laughs> wants to biohack with technology. I'm like, how about the technology right here? Do that one as well, right? You'd be surprised what you biohacking. have inside. It's so, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you talk about your program, you made it very accessible for practitioners because it's it was one weekend a month. It was yeah. very doable. It's intense, mm-hmm. <laughs> the commitment, but it's very doable, which was really wonderful. Yeah, thank you, uh, Joseph. It's one weekend intensive per month. Level one is a four-month program. So one weekend intensive. Uh, uh, and in the meantime, in, in the when during that month you're doing exercises, you're doing practice, uh, you're turning in case reports, uh, they're all getting looked at. You get a lot of feedback. We have phone calls, uh, conference calls between each class. Level two is a five month program, same same format, one weekend intensive per month. And then at the end, uh, there are some hours for certification. And again, it's all mentored. It's live online, just like this uh, on Zoom. And we have students from all over the world, uh, which is really exciting. And we build the community that way. And every cohort Mm. has its own wonderful group of fabulous people who get to know each other very well. (laughs) I bet. And we have an online uh, Facebook group and and other things that we do. So that's that's the program. How big is your organization? to really do all this and spend time with your practitioners in training. I mean, how, how did you develop this? What's the... <laughs> Over time and slowly. <laughs> um, it's, it's a mentored program, meaning uh, we have wonderful TAs, wonderful assistants, wonderful mentors that come in and work one-on-one with the students mm-hmm. uh, to make sure that the processes are working for them and making adjustments and things like that. I'm accessible uh, to all the students. And in the the second part of the program, we work very closely together in the level two. Uh, There are master classes as well that students can take with all kinds of really fun, unique subjects, you know, that can enhance the reading process for their practice. And we're just developing more and more over time. I'm going to have a level three, hopefully next year for the graduates, because they're bringing it now into their fields. And so there's questions and more we can do on that, on that score. Right. The field is growing, right? It is really growing. It's growing a lot. And at the National Organization for Medical Intuition, we're keeping our eye on that. And we're wanting to engage, uh, you know, medical intuitives from all over the, not just the country, but all over the world as well. Wow. And I'm excited what it can do for um, science. I mean, can, we, we try to see further with the telescopes, the microscopes, we're trying to open our bandwidth. And how do we employ that? Not that it, um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's another data point. It's to be the only data point. It's another data point. Mm-hmm. But that yeah. is how the stages of the ages we're accessing. Here, let's go into another modality of of Mm -hmm. thinking, open up those receptor sites and intuit. You know, I'll I'll say this. You say the word quantum entanglement or (laughs) um, uh, um, what is it? Spooky effect at a distance. I think that was Einstein's. You say that about this work and all the scientists come down and you cannot say that it only works on the quantum level. I'm sorry, but we're made of the quantum level as well. I mean, people just want to shut that conversation down so quickly. You know, Um, let me just say this, because there are there are glimmers of hope. (laughs) Okay, good. The glimmers of hope. Um, When the when the study that I did, I mentioned earlier, we had those wonderful 94 to 98 percent accuracy rates that was published in the Journal of Integrative and Complementary Medicine. And that particular article was the that was the first research done in over 20 years on medical intuition. And that study I mentioned where they gave a big thumbs down was also published in the 90s in the journal of it was called the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, same journal. And so there was an interest in following up on this 20 something years later, more than that. Uh, And um, that's what I see. I do a lot of talk, I give a lot of talks and and, uh, I speak at integrative health conferences and the reception that that I get uh, and my colleagues get at those is it shows you that things are changing changing because you can talk about you know how 
you know, different supplements and herbs and you know energy healing and all those wonderful interventions but to talk about this this is the paradigm shifter in my opinion uh, this is what will can change the whole picture rather than just aspects of the picture and that's why i started my program all those years ago because when i realized that the doctors were calling me for information and wanting reputable medical intuitives, which is again, why National Organization for Medical Intuition was formed to vet yeah. medical intuitives and present them among other things. There's a need for this. People want it. It's not so, it's certainly woo woo, good Lord, but, but it's not so woo woo that people can't understand the concept of it. Because it's part of our lived experience. Well, and I think like you, um, we, you know, we have a practice where you open up and you're in dialogue with the universe, with yourself, with, with this exchange of energy and uh, people want it. People know it. We understand it as something we already know. It's yeah. just bringing us to conscious mind. It is part of our lived experience and embodied spirituality. Um, so it just, yeah, it's a paradigm shifter. Mm -hmm. if, if this is true, then, then it really changes the whole picture of reality. Let me, like let, really me bring, let me bring Brian, yeah. Brian, the partner in crime on this. You stay, Joseph. You're, so, you're, yeah. Yeah. Brian is Joseph's partner. Hello, Brian. Hello. It's great to see you, Wendy. And nice uh, Joseph, you. it's so fascinating. I've been so encouraged watching uh, Joseph's progress with your program and all the good that's come from that. Um, I, I love the conversation and what you're talking about, the paradigm shift. I, I just wondered what you're seeing also um, as our culture changes and this becomes more accepted that that um, yeah. medical intuition is part of our consultation with doctors, um, you know, how, how do you see the world shifting and changing right now? It's an interesting time we're living in. This is so needed. Um, are there ways you see it accelerating? Um, your work is definitely helping us come pay better attention. But what are what changes are you seeing happening around in the world right now that are opening the doors here? Gosh, what a good question. You know, I think we're living in a time of pretty intense contrast, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, contrast, heavy, like black and white, you know, <laughs> meaning metaphorically, just really intense contrast. And what that means is that people who are working the, you know, the outer edge, so to speak, of reality, <laughs> you know how to say this, Brian, but you know, the woo-woo, <laughs> That means that there's going to be more acceptance of that as well as less acceptance of that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We're going to hit both sides of it. There's already been that. Or more but extremes. Like, on either more, more ex spectrum. perhaps, perhaps more extremes, mm -hmm. but I'm, but with that more acceptance, you mm -hmm. can't look at both sides without seeing what well, that means that more people are going to be integrating this potentially. And, you know, just in the, I want to say the last 15 years, I, <laughs> I joke about this with the students, you know, if this was, when I started out in all this, you know, 20 something years ago uh, as a professional, and then before that, it was like mystery school stuff, right? You couldn't talk about this openly anywhere. Now, and now I live in California, so maybe my, my perspective is a little skewed here, but think about it. There is a yoga studio, and I would have guessed Every, every city, every town of a certain size, there are people talking about meditation. We have this internet, which allows people to you know, interact from all over. Mm -hmm. I see the progress of mind-body practices right. over the last 20 years, like, you know, like this. And right. that is what changes societies, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I see us in a very, very positive place, even with all of the extreme intensity of what's going on on the planet right now that is not, you know, positive. I want to, I, I want to talk about the role of personal experience mm. because even in your book, you open with a foreword by a Dr. Leonard was, was Nesky, Nesky, yeah. who's yeah. saying yeah. that, Hey, I'm a doctor and I had cases where people just don't heal despite all my efforts. Like you were uh, talking about in the beginning and you, you knew his wife. So his wife um, recommended you, you come in, you diagnose, and then boom, suddenly um, he finds a way for this patient to heal. Yeah, that wasn't, just, that, I wasn't the medical intuitive in that story. 
Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Okay, no, it's okay. But, it was somebody it that you worked with. Yeah. Yeah. It opened up that, hey, personal experience. Yeah. It, I mean, talk about evidence-based. We yes. find evidence in our daily lives yes. if we pay attention of those, of the universe signaling to us, hey, who we are, what's this about? I mean, it can only be delivered, I think, a lot of it through our intuition, this this faculty that is already tuned to this wider subtle energy field. So, um, well, there's more and more research on this. And those people who have been, you know, working this field, I had a wonderful chat with Larry Dossey, who's a phenomenal uh, writer. He's a medical doctor who's used his intuition for decades and studied non-local consciousness. And, you know, he allowed me a wonderful interview for, for the book. And he said, look, you know, there's, he's been talking to the medical field for decades and, you know, feeling like he's up against brick walls. And so that's why he was so excited. One of the reasons he was yeah. very happy to talk to me, because he said, look, the next generation, the next generation, the next generation are going to continue to bring this forward. And that's what I think, too. You know, I'm I'm standing on the shoulders of those who came before Edgar Casey, Carolyn Miss, brilliant, you know, works, and these people um, helped us understand what this is, and we're going to keep moving it forward. Yeah, yeah. keep yeah. moving it forward. I'd like to hear from our audience. Um, what well, has... Remember Valerie Hunt? You interviewed. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> she was a kid. She was another one. Yeah, another yeah, one that definitely. was really groundbreaking lady back in the '90s. Who was yeah. that? Yeah, Valerie Hunt. So oh, her book yes. was called, I, don't oh, I can't remember. Anyway, she was, but, yeah. You know, a lot Same of it has to happen so quietly. So a lot of those real pioneers were, aren't widely known. Yeah. Um, right. They were true. just working quietly. Mm -hmm. so, um, Tony, go ahead and talk to me about quantum entanglement. Why can't we talk about this in those terms? Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Here I come. Okay, um, uh, it's it's a term that's borrowed that's borrowed from physical science, and when it's picked up by a field um, like this, which I, I totally validate, it becomes uh, to the scientific community inauthentic. There's a whole body of things that underlie it. You may argue that it's similar, but I mean, I love the term mind-body processes. I love intuition. These are great. Um, but as soon as we mention quantum entanglement, uh, we no longer can talk to the scientific community. <laughs> uh, I recently had a Nobel Prize winner as a house guest here, and we could talk about all sorts of things. If I mentioned that for what we're talking about now, it would be end of conversation. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it, it doesn't mean that the concept can't be discussed, okay. but it's, it's co-opting the term. Yeah, I, I get that. Okay. That's what so we need new terms for these things, right? We need new yeah. terms that we can all understand that describe it. That is the shorthand for yeah, that. We, yeah, we need our own terms uh, for it. And, and I totally agree that, you know, that these things happen. I'm, I'm very intuitive, but it's just a way of, if we borrow something and if we make any error in interpretation, does, does this really relate on a one-to-one -one way with, with quantum mechanics? Probably not. And, okay, but, but and, can and, we and, agree? Let me, let, me, no. let me finish, please. Sure. Uh, but, and if it does, we have to go and explain why in detail, as opposed to just grabbing a term. Right. Can we agree, though, that the universe has various strata of energy and exchange that maybe we haven't recognized or named, but this is natural. This is part of how the universe Absolutely. works. That we can communicate. Absolutely. What and, do we call it? Could... Effect at a distance really nicely describes it. But you know, well, I, I, I don't well, mind I addressing this. We... Please, Wendy. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's so I, I make a joke, which is not a joke, it's a reality. I can clear a room faster than anything else uh, of a room of doctors by saying the word clairvoyance. They will mm. just head for the exit. So early on, okay. I realized that yeah. I needed different terminology if I was going to speak to their listening, so to speak, you know, that phrase, meaning say it in a way they can hear it. <laughs> yeah. And frankly, yeah. that's a big part of medical intuition, too, because you're going to see some, you know, things in people's energies in their lives that we need to be able to language it properly. So mm -hmm. language in medical intuition also falls under the rubric of ethics. How do we say this? Good. in a way that someone can hear it 
uh, and you know, uh, and and it can it can make a difference, right? It can move the needle somehow. Yeah, Wendy, totally yeah. with you on what you're saying. You're saying on this, and, and it's a matter of speaking so people can hear. Right. And if we right. if we co opt the term, the people that are using the term, unless you have evidence that you are, you've gone through all the details of that, immediately discredit you. It clears the room, so to oh, say. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's no, why I did no the reason, first there's research. No reason, there's no reason to do that. So yeah. I, I love what you're saying. You know, speak so people can listen. And, and and I think terminology so people can hear. I mean, I've been at parties where people just, oh, that's just quantum entanglement. And and uh, my my reaction is, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's time to, what, well, what do you know? Uh, okay. I've been on the receiving end of it too. Like when Tachyon came out, you know, some new yeah. finding called Tachyon. Battery stuff. Every you know, Tachyon product magnetic, out there. Magnetic, and I'm like, too, oh, yeah. please, you know, come on. Yeah, you're not employing the Tachyon in a bottle. But um, yeah. so I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. What terms do you like, Wendy? Uh, what what terms? Wendy are... drills it into our heads, epic. It's so <laughs> over and over. We can't say this and just being yeah. described. It's about okay. how you say it. Yeah, it's how, how, say how you it. say it. You drilled yeah, well, into I us. I need a lesson Solidly. in this. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, give it to me. Well, a, a lot of this is that because as a medical intuitive, we do not diagnose, prognose, uh, prescribe, but we can describe like, you know, forever and help people find a path. So generally speaking, and I'm I'm not sure this this goes with uh, what, you know, the, the prior discussion here, but what we're what we talk about here is how can we say what we see in a way that empowers the client? And, and that is ethic. That's all about ethics, right? Because out there in the world of intuition or even, you know, whatever, quantum theory, there's people spouting all kinds of stuff that can actually be quite harmful. Uh, you know, you, just like you don't want to hear something from the doctor that can, you know, undermine your confidence in your ability to heal, nor do you want to, as a medical intuitive, undermine anyone's uh, confidence. And, you know, we found that medical intuitives are, now this is part of the research that I did early on, that people trust the medical intuitive in many cases more than they trust their doctor. Now that's a pretty, that's a pretty intense finding. Um, but, you know, obviously we want to take that and combine the two and not have that dichotomy, right? So, for us, it means that there's a power differential that we absolutely have to respect and honor and know how to work with. So Joseph's Power right, right? differential. I, I, I drill it into them. <laughs> Are you also helping the client um, to pay attention to their own intuition? And to honor yeah. their free will, to pay attention to their own intuition, to make their own choices. Mm. Yeah. And getting back to the languaging, I, Maria uh, sent me a text and she said, you know, the, it's, it's kind of an interesting name, medical intuitive, because in the native languages, in the ancient language, it would be called a shaman. Yeah. I mean, it was a role of the shaman. Yeah. But if you were to say we have the shamanic technique for healing that categorizes you and maybe that languaging would, would stop you from the progress that you're trying to accomplish. So we have to add Maria here to this discussion because Maria is an energy healer nice. and uh yeah. Hello, hello, Maria. Hi to all of you. <laughs> Hi, Joseph. Hello. The English version of your name. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Hearing you, Wendy. Uh, I did not. I'm sorry. I had to take a call from Europe, but I didn't hear everything. But uh, hearing you, how you develop your abilities. Uh, it seems like for you, it was much more easy than for me, because I know I'm a highly sensitive person, but my path was much more rocky than yours, uh, probably. I don't know. I can't judge it. But uh, yeah, being a nurse for so long, a nursing teacher, and at the same time, being able to feel, because I'm not clear uh my vision is not <laughs> my main uh intuition my main intuition is feeling mm -hmm. so uh being able to feel what a patient feels what other people feel think and sometimes to hear their thoughts 
has brought me into trouble. <laughs> I'm sure. Not, I'm sure of my, that. <laughs> my profession, but private. <laughs> my yeah. private life. Yes. Um, we, uh, as uh, what I would like to add to is uh, Eileen Aaron wrote the book, The Highly Sensitive Person. And it helped me a lot to survive <laughs> because it is uh, really uh, when you don't have the environment that uh, helps you develop, uh, you have to do it yourself and you have to figure out what is mine, what is uh, the others. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's a lifelong journey for me. <laughs> and so... Uh, yes, I, I I am trained as a Healing Touch certified practitioner, and Healing Touch really is a rigorous training, very uh, very ethical. And I agree with you that it is uh, really difficult. Uh, you have to find the language what the other person can take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a challenge for me in English, in German, it is a challenge, but in English even more. So I'm often just not out there because I don't want to offend people. But uh, at the same time, uh, it's a pain to see what can be done or what could be done. And uh, the other person is just not ready for it. And, it, yeah, that's a really important point, actually. Yeah. And you have to accept it because there is a reason why the other person is not not ready to to see mm -hmm. or to to go forward. There is a reason for it, and you have to wait. Or you have to see the reason. <laughs> and explain the, the reason. reason. <laughs> yes. You can do that too. That's yes. part of the medical so, intuitive process. I know, I, yeah. So often yeah. I see the reason, but the other uh, the, the, the client yeah. is Thank just you, Maria. Not, not there. Yeah. yeah, you're getting into people's lives and their issues and their blind spots, and it's going to be touchy. I would oh. imagine. Believe how do you stuff. say that diplomatically, di yeah. diplomatically, and in a self empowering way, so they can see right. the way out of it? Yeah. Right. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, go ahead. Um, I can help answer that. And, yeah. and I really appreciate that, um, Maria. You're absolutely right. So many, so many humans, not just you know, all of us really, are clairsentient, meaning we really feel. And you have to cut yourself off from that pretty intensely, you know, or have yeah. reasons to cut yourself off from that, uh, to not feel. Um, in my program, I actually train people to not use their clairsentience uh, because it is not as neutral Mm -hmm. as clairvoyance clairvoyance has more neutrality around it because it's an observational rather than a feeling uh, skill that said you know it, we all have access right yes but still yeah my um my uh, i'm not only feeling i can hear see also yeah. Yeah. yes oh, exactly the Same, feeling yeah. is the main Mm -hmm. The feeling is the main uh, I, thing for me. I would say 99% of the students that come through the program, <laughs> maybe 97, uh, that is their main intuition skill set because it's a very natural one for highly yeah. sensitive people. It's natural for people uh, who are intuitive. Yeah. Uh, so learning learning this other method, is, there's a learning curve to it. You know, you it's a uh, practice, like learning how to play an instrument. You know, you wouldn't expect yeah. yourself to do it right off yeah. the bat. Perfect. And learning, Maria, learning to, to know what is yours and what is the other's. Of course. That's right. It. That's exactly. the key. Yeah. 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 And that takes practice and feedback. And, Thank you. you know. That's energy Thank hygiene. You, yeah. 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 And, hygiene. And Miriam asked a good question too. She says, do you sometimes get a sense that people's condition can't be healed? What can you offer them? I mean, you, you can just get that intuition that this isn't going to stop. This is going to, this, this particular, this is not going to be healed. Yeah. So I have worked with many, many people who are terminal mm. or, um, you know, they have issues that are really deeply in, embedded somehow energetically and yeah. physically. Um, healing 
is a funny word. <laughs> it has a lot of meaning to it. Yeah. So what are we talking when we talk about healing? Are we healing just the physical body? That would be t traditional medicine. Are we healing the mind, the spirit, the soul? Mm -hmm. uh, healing can happen and should happen, frankly, on many, many levels. Mm -hmm. So the medical intuitive session is not for the purpose of healing, okay? It's not for that purpose. I'll say that again, because that really kind of wigs people You're a out. You're specialized field in that, yeah. It, it, it's, it's not for the purpose of healing the way healing touches for the purpose of healing. It's mm -hmm. for the purpose of information. I Inf get it. Mm -hmm. So it, Dean Ornish has a quote. This is my favorite quote of all time. Uh, awareness is the first step in healing right? Uh -huh. Medical intuition is about bringing to conscious awareness, whatever is out of balance in the body, not to mm -hmm. heal it, but to explain it, to right. observe it, to assess it, to mm -hmm. give my client and our clients information. What happens then? What happens then is a myriad of things can happen from that. Generally speaking, in a medical intuitive session, we're giving the person, our client, information that they can take to their healthcare providers, and we're also helping them prioritize what might the body is asking for in a in a in that area, right? What to do first, how to go forward. We're helping them create a path to their wellness. Mm -hmm. So healing, which we want to always talk about, will this thing go away? Will that thing go away? Will I ever be normal or whatever? That's not even the question that we're going to answer mm -hmm. because that's the question that's up to the client. Mm -hmm. But what we can say is, here's why it manifested. Here's the origin of this. Here's what the body is asking for. Here's what the mind and soul are asking for. Here's what spirit's asking for. Here's this information. Here's a pathway. Mm -hmm. Here's a new path. Maybe things Here's you haven't story, thought about. story, right? It's about the whole story. But it's not the client. Most, most of these kinds of modalities out there ask the client to sort of unearth this for themselves. We're not doing that. <laughs> We mm -hmm. don't need their interaction at all. We're saying, here's what we mm -hmm. see. And in that information is power and, and ideally usefulness, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, really practical information for the client on all those levels, emotional, mental, spiritual, physical. How and, often and does in it get order. into past lives? You it mentioned can. past lives can show It certainly well. can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I teach a whole masterclass on past lives because it is relevant to some clients. It'll be relevant to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can certainly, people can certainly bring things forward, uh, information. So karma, if we haven't things. learned this lesson in this lifetime, or we have a trauma, yeah. it might be carried over to the, why does this show up in the body? What is the body as a canvas for these traumas or being out of balance manifest? What is the correlation there? Body that's a really good question. That, that we, I, that we don't I understand. think it's that's really a good question. I haven't ever asked, you know, exactly why. We just see the connection. Mm -hmm. Um our because maybe because we're, you know, we're we're made of of emotion and energy, maybe, you know. Energy mm -hmm. has a certain frequency to it, emotion has a certain frequency to it. And these things can cause imbalances. It's a really good question. I'll be honest. That's no one's asked me that before. And I'm not even sure I have a good answer for that. <laughs> I don't I know, know why. Were, I can uh, just see it. <laughs> participant in Louise Hayes, like famous yeah. living room yeah. sessions. Yeah. Yeah. And then she wrote her book um, yeah. about if you have this disorder, it must mean this. I think that's a little too cut and dried. I think it it's going to be much more varied and deep than that. But what was that like? Well, to you know. You're asking a really good question that kind of goes with the prior one sure. that those uh, this was a phenomenal experience that I was very, very blessed to have. Yeah. This was very early on in her career before she was this juggernaut of everything. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we would meet in her living room. Uh, she was working uh, primarily with the AIDS community in Los Angeles, um, AIDS patients. And so it was a really interesting community because at the time, you know, things were pretty rough. And uh, she was talking about how the mind and the body are connected, the mind, emotions and body are connected. So um, that was a very interesting community. When you think I about, uh, you know, AIDS or this particular epidemic, uh, pandemic, that really, time nobody knew anything about nobody it. Nobody knew anything, but this was a vulnerable community. This was in the, gosh, the late 80s, I think. Yeah. when uh, that community was still finding its own footing, you know, its own sense of self, really, in 
society. And so maybe that was a vulnerable community. I don't know, you know, emotionally, I couldn't speak to that. But um, a lot of the people that came through, um, you know, were struggling with the disease and with their own ideas of self and selfhood in that context. Very interesting to think about. I'm not that, yeah. I don't, I don't take that, you know, world philosophical view. I think it's really good. Inf it's an interesting concept to explore. You know, I can tell you on the personal level, on the one-to-one -one level, it is obvious and clear to medical intuitives where the trauma began, mm -hmm. uh, what engendered it, what came out of it, how the body, the mind, the spirit, the psyche, the physiology reacted to it, and where the imbalance lies in the present moment. That is a clear trail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we doing it on a cultural level I think would be fascinating so there you go <laughs> yeah well that would be quite the study to yeah. uh to correlate but I will say I had an interesting experience so I met an acupuncture wasn't Joseph um but he was from China and he carried his little uh, acupuncture needles in his pocket and he he walks up to me and he goes your shoulder is in distress isn't it I go you know actually yeah it is he goes sit down he put needles right in the shoulder he said, this is grief. Did your mother just, what's, what's it with your, my mother had just passed away. He goes, yeah, this is your holding grief right here. And yeah, how did he know? How did he know that? He was reading it, right? Yeah. Or he, same, some information exchange right there. Yeah. And yep, sure enough, um, loosened it right up. But there that was go. to me like, and he said, this is a common place for grief to be held. I don't know. It just... Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Does everybody's body respond differently or is there a universal pattern for how trauma does trauma have a favorite place? Does it matter which trauma and when and do or different organs? Is it meridian? How does it work? Is well, there a every, mapping of this? <laughs> there are a lot of people who have worked to map the body that way and the biofield. Um, and I know Chinese medicine certainly has a long tradition of that as well. Various organs holding various emotions, things like that. Louise Hay did a brilliant job of that as well. Yeah. As a medical intuitive, I have to set all that aside because it becomes a bias, doesn't it? Oh, it just becomes you. a bias. If I'm only going to look at your shoulder for grief, what if it's being held in your big toe? Right. I would miss right. it. Right. So I, I'm not, mm -hmm. even though I will tell you that stress Mm -hmm. uh, physical, emotional, mostly emotional stress affects all of the systems of the body, not just the gut, not just the, uh, the nervous mm -hmm. system, all of the systems of the body. Um, there really are no cut and dried pad answers for any of this. And I've been doing this work for over 20 years. Oh, one size fit all. Yeah. Never one size fit all. And if a minute you put that in, and there are very famous medical intuitives and healers out there that would disagree with me vehemently and God bless them. I mean, that's mm -hmm. fine, but not from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. What's the most surprising um, case that you've worked on <laughs> that taught you the most or that was oh, the outcome? Well, yeah. Um, you know, there's so many and I wrote a lot of them in the book, but I, I'll pull one out that was surprising because you said surprising first. <laughs> it yeah. just surprised yeah. me. Um, was this wonderful gentleman who uh, came to see me because he had had a, uh, an, he was an older gentleman, he had an intestinal blockage, and he had an emergency surgery, and the surgery created a hernia for him. Now, this is, a, you know, not a major health issue, but mm -hmm. enough of one that he really wanted me to look at it. And so I looked at it. And he said, you know, my doctor wanted me to have, uh, you know, a surgery to like, put mesh in, but I'm afraid of, the, I'm afraid of that, because this was some years ago. And mesh was, there's a lot of lawsuits about it. So he was kind of nervous about that. And <laughs> it surprised me because of the depth of information. I looked at it and I'm dialoguing with his body. I'm dialoguing with his energy field and, you know, the quantum thing we all talked about. Um, and I'm saying, okay, well, what, what can he do? And it showed me, uh, his body showed me this image of stem cells coating this mesh piece of mesh, the surgical mesh. And I'm asking, well, what does this mean? And it turned and it showed me that there was, you know, something going on in another country that talked about how stem cells on the on the mesh, the body wouldn't reject it, the body would accept it, there'd be less inflammation, it was, oh. you know, could save lives, could save 
you know, all the rest of it. And so I'm, I'm explaining what I'm seeing to him. No, I have no knowledge, no personal knowledge of anything like this. And, and I said, you know, it looks like it might be from a foreign country. Why don't you talk to your doctor about this? See if he can do the research and find the study, some studies on this. And maybe it's something that'll come to the U.S. I said, that's interesting. And, you know, at the end of the session, of course, me, I immediately go to Google to find out what the heck it is I just saw. <laughs> and there it was. Um, it turns out that a month prior, this was in 2018, and the month prior, a study had been published in a, I, I, th I think it was an Asian or Chinese medical journal, it wasn't even in English. Uh, there was a translation online that had just been posted the month before, oh, and wow. they had been practicing with a stem cells, covering stem cells, a mesh on, covering mesh with stem cells using uh, pigs and rats, and they just did the first mm -hmm. human trial, and it was a success, and that was the study. And I looked at this, oh. and I went, holy cow, and I sent it to him. Now, this is not unusual for, and by the way, nowadays, you know, how many years later, that's not uncommon. People have now that it's come to the US and people are using it. Wow. So this was one of those things where I went, okay, there's some something's going on here. This is real, right? Yeah. If I can find it online, if I can prove what I've seen in some fashion, that's mm -hmm. it's not surprising really, but it's just it just solidifies the validity, I would say. I I I have a friend who cut off the tip of their finger to the fingernail. Wow. And I just said, you know, I know that there's got it. I just felt that there was something that could be done about this, this was about 10, 12 years ago. And I Googled around and I found there was a study with pig bladder that some guy on his own had been doing. And pig bladder has stem cells or something like that. It was more accessible. And they put it on the end of a joint and it can actually grow it back. Like a salamander can regrow a limb. Well, you can jumpstart the body to do this. And I actually called the guy. I read a journal. I called him. I said, hey, this person needs this. He goes, I'd love to accept him into the study. But the army has just um, created a, a study with my work. And I'm not allowed to take private patients because of that. Mm -hmm. The government wow. stepped in. But yeah. do you hear about this now? Is that out there now? Um, that's a good know, question. It, it's interesting. The breakthroughs with so much, of what can be done so and, much, and how, you know, let me get swept up and is no longer available, but I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know, but in medical intuition, one of the, one of the hallmarks of the skill set is yeah. being able to intuitively discern, uh, things that may be very new, that may be coming down the pike, wow. uh, that may be, um, you know, on the horizon, on the horizon, or even things that people don't really know about or utilize very much. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. These connections that we make uh, that, that are available in the, you know, quantum field, if you want to call it that, and it, that the body can bring forward, the energy can bring forward. The bioenergetic and, field. <laughs> yes. Uh, there you go. The bioenergetic yeah. field that, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. That's what surrounds us and, and is yeah. part of who we are. Yeah. And, um, and, and part of that paradigm is going to be, how does the body work? Right? Mm. What are, what can we do? Can we regrow? Um, can you grow a new fingertip or organ or whatever? My gosh, that's really nice. <laughs> Have there been cases you cannot read? And why, no. why might that be? You can read, no. you can finally read the body wants to be heard, doesn't it? Well, and so does the spirit. So does the soul. Every, you know, there's yeah. always, there's always something to read always. Uh, regardless, yeah. there's always something to look at. There's always information. I've had clients that have been resistant <laughs> to the information that's read. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's their choice. It's their free will. But in terms of the skill set, no, there's no, there's nothing you, that you couldn't look at. We something. worked with um, Ipu Piar, who's now passed away, um, and he was a rainforest shaman from the Uruwe Wawa tribe, mm -hmm. and he was giving various uh, was workshops. Also an anthropologist at, at yes, yes, yeah. uh, yep, working in D.C. at the yep, and uh, what he had, he had a volunteer lie down, and he said, "Now I'm just going to show you how I scan the body," and I this far above the person's body. Just, just slowly put your hands across it. 
and he goes, now tell us, each of you go through and tell us what you feel. Mm -hmm. It was amazing how if you open up to this, oh, this feels hot over here. This feels cool. This feels rough and textured. This feels smooth. This feels like light. This mm -hmm. feels like dark and dense. It was amazing how you can pick up information. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't surprise me that you could do it mentally. You can do it with with your hands you can if you tune in it's it's surprising how much you can read right mm -hmm. so, yes absolutely and many many energy healing practices use that kind of assessment for the biofield for the physiology yeah. just you know hot dense cold it, you know prickly whatever and that's wonderful that's what I did as an energy healer uh, yeah. And you remove those blocks and, you know, people can have these wonderful mm -hmm. healings from it. Um, the one thing I will say about any modality out there is what I found in mine. And that is that people have free will to bring back the imbalance. Bottom line, uh, I don't care what it is physically or whatever it is emotionally, people have free will. And what does that mean? That means if it, if it, this is again, when I was doing that healing and I would feel the blocks and I'd remove them, like just those using hands, mm -hmm. they'd come back with those same things in place. I'm like, okay, well, what is holding it there? To me, that is the most interesting piece yes. of this. What is keeping something in place when the person clearly wants to be free of it? Well, how does it serve them or how did it serve them? Or how is it locked energetically into their well, field? What exactly. does it take to let it go? Right. And, and different. Um, and even, do you get any indication about what modality might work like you yes. did with the stem yes. cell? So you share that information. Absolutely. Um, That's a big part of it. Yeah. That's, it comes in a section that we, where we are asking for recommendations from the body, from the energy. What is it that wow. can move the needle here? What can make this, what can help this client release whatever's going on physically, emotionally, spiritually? Mentally. What what is some of the most surprising answers that the body has given you and what it mm. needs? <laughs> My gosh, I it, it's uh, look. You know, when it comes to me, I'm always at you know uh, surprised. Yeah. I'm always surprised and delighted. It, oh. it it's never a one you know pat yeah. answer. It's always but something I mean, that's unexpected. unique and tailored. Yeah. <laughs> No. I have to think about that. Um, what, I mean, can it be just the tiniest little shift, you know, right? Yes. The tiniest because, little lever yes. that lets it all go. I find it that will. in my life. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why that can be. Okay. Um, I, frankly, sometimes just hearing the story of, of, you know, how something manifested is enough for people to go, okay, I'm ready to move on from that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that can happen. But um what I call a uh, subtle or hidden trauma. Generally speaking, when we talk about trauma yeah. uh, and when in the psychology world, psychological world, we're talking about big things, you know, um, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, uh, drugs, uh, poverty, big things. Uh, and that's what it generally gets studied. And those, those, there's a whole field of, um, they call them adverse childhood experiences that is very well studied and very well understood that mm -hmm. early life trauma can lead to later life health issues, uh, you know, diabetes, cancer, all kinds of things, not only just behavioral issues, but health issues from the stress of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I have looked at people's energy, yes, we see the big ones and we see very small, subtle traumas that actually can lead to chronic health issues or health issues just same exact way as the big wow. ones. Wow. Well, what does that mean? That means that, you know, when you were little in the crib and you were crying and crying and your diaper was wet and, you know, mother was in a bad mood or something, I'm just giving you an example, sure. um, that, yeah. you know, you could have retained some kind of emotional hit from that, a trauma, so to speak, from that, and in that could inform what? a belief system, a, a, a way of looking at the world or yourself or something like that, a belief system or an, an energetic uh, uh, artifact that can hinder your, your growth. They, it can show up as like a, um, an energetic anomaly 
an imbalance and that can grow into something else. So we're always looking to see where these, not just the major traumas, but these subtle hidden traumas can really cause problems in people's lives and in their health. That's, mm -hmm. that's really, you know, the description of why medical intuition is so valuable. Cause you can go, if I had a dollar for every client that's a nickel for every client that said, well, I've already worked on that in therapy. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> okay. Great, I'm glad. They didn't get to it, did they? It's, it's, yeah. Well, it's still in the energy field. So what does that mean? Uh, yes. They might understand it mentally or even emotionally, but energetically it's still hanging on. So what is the missing piece? So you could right. see in therapy, the time talk to the therapist an energetic, um, medical intuition partner in that i mean it's exciting to think how medical intuition or intuitives can partner up with different fields yeah they already and how are they can work together and okay this reminds me of fred smith's one of our community members and a frequent guest and how when we talk about not in isolation in the story the family story he talks about going into india and in remote uh, villages uh, being one of the only Westerners to witness these community-wide rituals where it's an energetic healing done through ritual with the with the gods present. Mm -hmm. um, and major breakthroughs uh, happen. Mm -hmm. And some of the clinics where they work on this level. Mm -hmm. And it brings to my mind, what role does ritual have in some of the healing modalities that you see prescribed? Couldn't ritual help clear that energy body we find that it that it can and it does mm -hmm. you're working um, with the psyche with with gestures with set and setting mm -hmm. yeah. um right? and so yeah i i, I, I would say all of that modality yeah, i i would agree with you on that uh i i love that and sometimes that's what the energy wants mm -hmm. it wants a cleansing ritual it wants to symbolically and metaphorically and physically remove you know whatever has been blocking i love that it's lovely yeah, yeah. kind of, kind of remind, going way back in time here uh we we had the pleasure of, of interviewing dr andrew wilde when he wrote his book uh, spontaneous healing at okay. that time when he had all that research showing that yeah. this is not some miracle this is just a biological fact within the the, the, the nervous system but by simply having the right intentions and, and whatever there was, that was quite a, well, we also asked him um, how common are spontaneous healings. And he said, well, I've seen men, many in my patient list and every doctor I talk to will have some cases where they cannot explain how a patient healed. But my question to him was, well, why aren't you asking those patients what they did? Because perhaps <laughs> they're, they're working on their own with other tools. You know, why don't you go study the success stories? There's there's um, a there's a thought. There's I will a, happen out of the blue. Maybe they did something. You know? My wife. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, the Institute of Noetic Science has on its oh, yeah. website, uh, uh, they call it the spontaneous remission library or something like that. Oh, and yeah. it's a it's like it just goes on forever. It has all these different issues, health yeah. issues, and on all of the research that's been done and the documentation on the spontaneous healings of these wonderful. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. You could spend hours looking at that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are talking about medical intuition where the patient goes to their doctor and then goes through these modalities or whoever there. But I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot of spontaneous remissions happening that would be categorized that way. Right. When you know the story, when the body's working with you, when you're uh, performing whatever it's it is or, hey, I don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I recognized a lot of high school trauma. Right. Um, that goes on. And I made a visit many years later to the high school itself. It was empty. And I just walked around and everything disappeared. All the bullying, all the nonsense, all the mean girls, all the blah, blah, blah. It just floated away. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow, you know, this is just, it just, it was very healing just to walk through. Yeah. I'm like, it's wow. Lovely. And I'm glad I became the person I didn't engage in a lot of that nonsense. So it's a personal um, responsibility to healing. It's not just taking supplements and, and whatever, but it's taking that responsibility yeah. for one's own clarity of, of, of life. And, and I but, think grace coming in as well, inviting grace coming in and just major shifts. Yeah. Like there's, yeah. Just, I no longer yeah. need this. All I right. I need to step up and be who I need to be to do the work I need to do. I don't have time for this nonsense. <laughs> 
but we, I, we all have many layers, many layers to work on. I think it takes a lifetime, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe many lifetimes. Many yeah. lifetimes. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Last yeah. call for Joseph and Brian. Anything else you want to say? And thank it, you so much, uh, Joseph, um, for bringing Wendy. Maria had us. a Maria had her hand up for a bit. Oh, oh I didn't see I'm that. sorry, Maria. We didn't see that. Maria, did yeah. you want to add another question or a comment? Comment. Yeah. Let's see her. She's uh, oh, there. She's coming. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I I would like to clarify that we in healing touch don't say we heal. Oh, we, we don't say, say we heal. Yeah. Yeah. Very we good. Say all healing is self healing. Yeah. And oh. for me, there is never ever been such a thing like all one thing fits all. Of mm -hmm. course, we have a set of modalities, but mm -hmm. what I see in clients uh, uh, has to uh, that calls for different things, and I I have to be aware enough to see uh, to know what can be done and what can't be done. Right. And mm -hmm. for, uh, mm -hmm. when I say that. Uh, uh, some clients don't heal. I can tell you one example. I was working with this person and every, uh, every time I saw this person again, oh yes, it did, uh, it, did, uh, it was, I was feeling well for a while, but then it came back. Okay. Yeah. And th then I heard, what would this person do without mm -hmm. This, mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And but then I thought about it, and I thought I thought about the life circumstances, and I thought, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you, Maria. I see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Universal profound, truth. isn't it? It's All very truth. profound. Yes. And uh, there are so many more mm -hmm. uh, issues out there or causes of. Uh, illnesses, not only trauma, trauma does big and small, <laughs> the small trauma does can be much more long lasting than the big ones. That's but right. there are not only trauma does, there is so much more, there is the other world. Yeah. Uh, and the, you, you could feel, feel a whole uh, two hour session about what uh, what is the cause? <laughs> well, yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't take that long in a medical interview. <laughs> thank no, you so much. But yeah. no, not, thank you for the work you do. Not yeah. what I mean. That's not what I mean. You can talk <laughs> about it in a lesson for yeah. hours. And hours. It must be very gratifying to hear from somebody practicing that energetic healing that she's correlating exactly what you've been saying with what you're finding, Maria. These are like yeah. universal. Truth, principles, aren't uh, principles of then how, yeah. and how uh, when there is works. a spirit, when there is spirit attached to it, and I try to tell the spirit, it's not your place, please yeah. accept it. And next yeah. time, oh hi, I have seen you before. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. That. Practical, and practical, hands-on. Final comments, Joseph. Yeah. Um, well, you go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Um, as an acupuncturist, so often I see patients who um, they don't get better. Like everything I do for one person, I do for them. It doesn't work. And the exciting thing with this, and although mm -hmm. I, I, right now there are very separate practices that I'm doing, but the mm -hmm. concept of people say they want to heal, but the, what Randy talks about, the permission to release their condition, they, they don't even know the words to describe it. They don't even know how to to say it, they just want to get better, but no matter what we do, they don't get better until we get to that point. And that's one of the most fascinating yeah. things about this mm -hmm. medicine that I'm, about this modality, not the modality, yeah. this medical intuition that, um, you know, I find exciting and to yeah. work on a different level. So thank you, Wendy. Thank you. And I have one last quickie um, story here. So I want to under get your understanding of how this works, Wendy. But I went to a conference and I started to get sick to the point where I was in pain and like stomach hurting and nose dripping. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. And I just sat down and I told my body, 
I am speaking out here later this afternoon. I have networking to do. I have people to go meet. I flew down here. I'm in a, you know, I'm spending money in a hotel. I've got to show up and be like my best self. I have no time to be sick. Body, I have no time to be sick. I cannot do this. This is not happening. This is like go away illness. Whatever you are, don't have time for it. And I it just cleared up and I was fine. And I'm like, wow. You know, when pressed our backs to the wall, there's amazing things that we can do. How, you know, I, I was like, okay, body, thank you, listening, whatever, you know what it was. Immune system, what did you do? You went in there and like, just killed it. Like, yeah. <laughs> return me to health. Thank you. It's amazing. That was, that was revelatory. I remember being in a movie theater, hearing everything around me. I'm like, my hearing is too attuned. I need to dial it back so it's comfortable. Still, I need to know. tune into what yeah. I need to hear and block out what I don't need to hear. I think there's an amazing lever that we can adjust within our own body and how it functions mm -hmm. and that we have control. We have, we can work with our body to optimize our experience here on the planet. I think there's more power that we have at our fingertips than we know. And I would, I would just like to get your comments on that. I agree 100%. And what a great story. And yes, I have used similar techniques for my own body. It's like, okay, this part yeah. is in pain. Well, what are we going to do about that? I will address it at another time. So let's just, let's just remove the pain. So much can yeah. be done with visualizing, with connecting with our body, talking to our bodies, listening to our bodies. A lot of people talk to their body, but they're not listening. <laughs> You know, it's like, what does that mean? Well, body, there's a message in here. What is it you want me to know? And yeah. so I delight in training people uh, on how to get more in tuned, not just in a esoteric way, but in a very practical yeah. daily way. Okay. What do you want? How are we doing? I have, I mean, this is stuff I use myself every day. Uh, and I'm also very good at ignoring my body because we, we get to do that in life, right? <laughs> we get to ignore it. I'm out. So yeah, it's, yeah you know, so it's, yeah. it's a, it's a constant reminder. Oh yeah. Okay. I can do this. So let's do it. I mean, mm -hmm. I have healed things that, you know, on whatever that my doctors are like, what are you doing? <laughs> like that wasn't supposed to heal so fast. Well, I just had a little conversation, you know, with it and mm -hmm. cleared it, you know, we got to an understanding and now it's not there anymore. And that's, yeah. We we're on. We science hasn't figured this one out yet. <laughs> when science can figure it out, then we'll have a completely different society. But until Thank then, it's you. a very personal process and wonderful, yeah. wonderful story. And you know, I think these kinds of stories need to be written down and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, put out there in celebrated, the celebrated, right? Celebrated and understood and just brought forward. That's really what you're talking about. Really, is the mind body connection, yeah. and that's what everybody is wanting right and when we understand that we'll have a different society my sister has a wonderful story of uh how we talked to a hands-on healer and he said hey you can apply it yourself pull down energy yeah. apply she had a broken knee exactly. from a skiing accident and uh she was doing this and feeling oh i feel i feel the energy along the lines where i know the break as i saw in the x-ray i'm doing this he said several times a day she um was out of her cast and half the time the doctor yeah. Uh, suggested like, what did, yeah. what were you doing? Well, amazingly, we can yeah. pull down the life force and apply to know what we can do to know the techniques, to do it, to be empowered and give ourselves permission. Yes. Like that's so self-empowering. Well, so all empowering. Maria, yeah. Maria, Maria said it all healing is self-healing and what we Thank want you, to Maria. learn are the yeah. ways to do that, that work for us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Beautifully said. Yeah. Thank you. The practical Thanks. path dot com the practical path why did you name it such i think that's very telling <laughs> the practical path uh because uh, there are spiritual paths there are esoteric paths and to me medical intuition is the most practical path when it comes to understanding yeah. what the body wants so yeah yeah I, I, my, my philosophy is i love spirituality but if it isn't practical in my life you know may not be for me <laughs> <laughs> i like the subtitle of a visionary path to wellness. I like that a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Kind of says it all. We're all about the vision. And also the National Organization for Medical Intuition. We're building membership. 
Yes, please too. join. We have supporting yeah. memberships for everybody. You don't have to be a medical intuitive. Please come and join yeah. us and help our mission. I'm also interested in your very short course for just your average person, yeah. because we all want to know our story yeah. better. You take yeah. the span of the uh, of yeah, yeah. Control. <laughs> now that <laughs> that, that course, course, I with a, uh, with yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Forgive me for oh, I was trying to be funny. I said, "Is your course longer than a TED talk?" Because we all have <laughs> such short attention spans nowadays. <laughs> uh, it's well, a short course. Yeah. yeah, that will be available soon. That that I used to teach in you know in workshops, but I decided to, to transition it to a self study course because I think it works really well that way. It's a lot of workshopping that you yeah. do. Uh, you have a manual, a, a little workbook, and all the rest That's of it. That's what we so. need a manual. We need like <laughs> I want to learn for how you brought your stuff into the mainstream. Yeah. We need to follow suit. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Wendy and Joseph. Thank Wendy you. Coulter. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah. Great interview, Laura Lee and Paul. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so oh, much. Well, what a pleasure. Great, yes, great audience. Great Thank, you. Thank you. Good to see you. Come to attend today. I, mean, I really mm -hmm. do think. Thank you. That was open. wonderful. And the one thing I mentioned in the very beginning was that yes, that Paul? idea of that you know it levels the playing field. The one thing about health, it doesn't it doesn't care the fact you know, that you you get the, your mic off. Oh, Did that's why my mic is so low. Uh, <laughs> actually, say what yes, you have to say. I want to hear what you have to say. Oh yeah, I just got turn off his mic. He did. I turned it off. Um, I was going to say, like I said in the very beginning in the introduction, you know, that this is the element that levels the playing field because we all have to deal with our health, no matter what our financial gains are, no matter what we've accomplished in life, no matter how big our ego is. The reality is that we have to deal with it. And especially as we get to a certain age, we start realizing, <laughs> you know, we don't live forever. It's a <laughs> shocking reality. Ganz, ganz kurz. Yeah. Uh, some, oh, 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 um, that so, was good. Anyway, that's my uh, sister. She has something to say. Oh, put my sister on. Oh, that, that was Bianca that was talking. Um, I know. Sorry, I'm Kim, in my Kim's pajamas. Talking. I've got a beautiful, you know, blue necklace on. But um, just um, yeah, you know, I have had a tough ass year for a year and a half with my hands, my legs, my this, my that, and um, um, and Laura, right when I broke my leg that was in the 90s and you had that healer on scheduled for your radio show and um i you know did that you look frozen are you okay are you yeah, okay? We're fine we can hear you yeah thanks um so anyway he said you know this happens for a reason i went i said okay you know i was exhausted i had many um uh, guests come and uh, anyway it was a program you know where you had that show that that fellow on uh. and he, he said rub your hands together and put it over where you broke your leg and no kidding I felt a, 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 a electrical current go from my big toe uh, up my leg jagged where it broke and then I did that often anyway mm. So, um, and it healed quickly. Oh, it did. Oh, with it was a month instead of two months, and the guy, the doctor, was uh, very surprised. Um, anyway, so um, I um, loved your show today. I'm so proud of you all, and you too. And um, yeah, and the nurses, you know, they know what's going on, or doctors mm -hmm. too, and different things. And as you said, it's just a wonderful addition to the knowledge. Yes, good and point, Kim. That's go wonderful. On from there, that's my darling sister, Kim. Yeah, yeah. they're they're oh, like definitely. they're not twins, but they think of themselves that way. Well, <laughs> I, thank you, Kim. Laura and I like Kim. bookends, like bookends. Yeah, bookends. Yeah, yeah they're bookends. Uh, it's, it's so it's just wonderful. nice to see how meaningful all this is to yeah. everybody. We all have a physical body. We all have body, mind, soul. They're all integrated. Let's yeah. use it. Thank you for all the work that you do, Wendy. Thank you, oh. Wendy. Yeah. Again. Thank you, Wendy. Thank, Thank you so about. much, everyone. Thank yeah. you. What a beautiful you. community. Appreciate Great it. Great to have you on. Very nice. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.